If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I like to tinker with the settings of pretty much anything I can get my hands on, and Twitch is no exception to that. Now in the last four years, streaming has blown up and Twitch has added a lot of features to accommodate this. So today I wanna to teach you 10 tips and tricks that I've learned over the last four years of streaming on Twitch. But a quick word from today's sponsor. Nerd or Die is a fantastic site to get all of your streaming aesthetic needs. And today they just dropped their newest streaming package, Flatpak. It's a minimalist but modern take on streaming aesthetics that covers everything from face cam overlays to notifications, widgets, timers, scenes, and stinger transitions. The pack offers five different color schemes to start and each has a dedicated light and dark mode variant. Not only does it offer customizable properties inside of Streamlabs and Stream Elements, but even has the After Effects files too. So if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of making this pack your own, you can alter any aspect you'd like. So be sure to check out the affiliate link in the description down below to make your streaming branding be heard. Seriously, go check that pack out. That's probably my favorite pack to date that they've ever made. And I'm 100% going to be incorporating that into my live streams. So now let's hop into the real video. All right, so we are gonna start right with the basics and that is making sure your stored broadcasts are turned on. Now, when I first started streaming on Twitch four years ago, this feature was not enabled. I don't know if it's still turned off by default, but I'm gonna make sure that you know how to turn it on just in case. So you're gonna to go to your profile icon right here and you're gonna to go to your creator dashboard. I'm just gonna open it in a new tab. That way I can full screen this for you. And when you're in your creator dashboard here, you're gonna to wanna to go down to your settings and go to stream. And then right here, your VOD settings, make sure store past broadcasts is turned on. Now by default, you get 14 days for your past broadcasts, that's two weeks. However, this is something that I've noticed. If you have Amazon Prime and you know how to link it to your account, you actually get 60 days instead of two weeks. Or if you want, you can get Twitch Turbo. Turbo is a $9 a month sub service where you get ad-free viewing. I'm not shilling out for Twitch. This is just something that a lot of people don't know about. So I figured I'd pass it off to you. Basically, you get ad-free viewing across the site, even if you're not subscribed to the streamer that you wanna watch. Uh, you get a chat badge, you get expanded emote slots, not sub badges for your channel. You get expanded emotes from Twitch specifically. Um, you can set custom name colors, and this is beyond just like the little boxes that you can select. You can actually put in a hex code and get a custom color so you look different from everybody else. It's a cool little perk. But the big thing for this is that if you don't have Amazon Prime, and obviously we're talking to non-partners here, um, you get 60 day storage as well. So if you don't wanna pay for Prime, but you still want that 60 day VOD storage so you can download it at a later date, Turbo's the way to go. And number two is gonna be low latency mode. Now, when I first started streaming on Twitch, normal latency was what was enabled and low latency was something you had to manually select. I believe now low latency is turned on by default, but the reason I'm showing you this is that if you don't have a lot of bandwidth or you tend to buffer a lot when you are broadcasting, if you select normal latency, this will actually help with the buffering issue. What this does is it basically allows you to spool up a little more so you have more time on the back end so that you're not just constantly buffering trying to keep up in real time. Now the trade-off is, is that instead of getting like three to four second, anywhere down to one second latency time with low latency. I think it goes up to about eight to 15 seconds for normal latency, which isn't unbearable, but it certainly isn't as nice as low latency. And on the same page, number three is going to be the disconnect protection. This one is huge. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because if OBS crashes or your computer crashes and it can reboot fast enough, you can see right here, you have 90 seconds to reconnect to your stream. This is a really nice feature because say OBS crashes and you reconnect to your stream, you're not gonna have two separate VODs. You're gonna have one continuous VOD and you don't lose any of your viewers. That's the best part. They don't have to refresh. You don't have to send out another notification. You just connect right back to your stream. Now, a minute and a half isn't very long, but it should be long enough for your computer to reboot in that time should OBS crash. All right, so the next one we're gonna talk about is followers only mode. Now you might be familiar with this, but you don't know how to set it up. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your creator dashboard and you're gonna go down to your moderation settings right here. And I already have it open here in a new tab. So when you scroll down, if you go all the way down here, there's followers only mode. Now the cool thing about this is you can set it to any followers or you can set it for certain lengths. Now this is really important because there are a lot of marginalized groups or minority groups that get a lot of hate raids and this is a really great way to deter them. Now 
10 minute follower only mode is probably what you want to set it to because if it's just follower mode, bots can get around that. But for 10 minutes, it's probably going to be a really easy way to get around that. I would be cautious of using this setting just because if you do get a raid from other channels and you have it set to any followers or any of these time constraints, none of the people that are coming in from the raid can talk in your chat unless they follow. And sometimes when people are forced to follow, it will deter them from coming into your stream at all. Now, on top of having follower only mode, you also have what's called auto mod. So you can go in here and basically auto mod just makes it so that any specific vulgarity words that come into chat, it will try and catch that. I have mine set to level zero because I have other keywords that I want canceled out and you can have specific blocked terms and phrases, which I'll click here. I'm gonna have all of this blurred out just because I don't want these words being shown on YouTube. You can probably guess what they are. Um, but this is a great way if you have any trigger words or anything that might set you off, this is a great way to block those. Outside of the auto mod controls, you also have built in hyperlink blocking now. If you have this turned on and anybody tries to put a link in your chat, including clips, all you will see in your chat are asterisks. Just be aware of that. If you turn this on, it will block every single link coming in. You can get around this by setting up specific link blockers with bots like Nightbot or Streamlabs bot. They have a specific command that will allow only Twitch clips to come in by specifically seeing that it is a clip Twitch clips URL. But if you don't want to deal with all that and you just want to have all of your links blocked right away because there are a lot of linky spam bots, just turn this on and you'll block everything coming into your chat. And just as a heads up, if you guys are enjoying the video, please don't forget to drop a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you want, you can subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for the support. And we're gonna keep making more great videos. One of my favorite features about streaming on Twitch is that I like to see the video stats of people that I'm watching. So what you can do when you're watching a stream, this is my friend Raleigh, you can go into the settings gear down here and then go into advanced and then turn on video stats. And basically what this is going to show you is it's going to show you the resolution that he's streaming at, the display resolution, which is the actual box right here that you're watching, as well as what frame rate he's streaming at, the buffer size, etc. And the most important part, the bit rate. So he's streaming at, a, I would assume, a 6,000 bit rate. Uh, it jumps all over the place, but he probably has it set to 6,000 in OBS. But this just kind of fluctuates over time. And you can see that he's in low latency mode. This is a really cool way to try and toggle with all of your settings, which if you haven't, Go check out my OBS streaming settings and it'll tell you how to get the best quality out of your streams. I think we're on number eight. So for this one, I'm gonna show you how to automatically export your VODs over to YouTube so you never lose any of your VODs. Make sure you're in your creator dashboard, go over to your icon and you can see just behind my camera here, there are account settings. You're gonna click on that and then you're gonna go to connections. Now in connections, you can see there's Blizzard and Steam and YouTube, and you're just gonna click connect, and then you're gonna link it to your YouTube account. It'll just ask you to log in and sync them up, and then you're good to go. Once you've linked to your account, just go back over to your profile icon, click on the video producer, and then find the VOD that you wanna send over to YouTube. Click on the three dots on the video that you found, and then just go down to export right here. Once you click export and click start, it'll send it off to YouTube and you don't have to do anything. And since we're in the video producer, this is one of the most powerful tools you get on Twitch. So let's go back to one of my most recent VODs. And basically when you click on it, you get a bunch of features up here. You can highlight it, download it, export it over to YouTube. You can add things to it. You can share it. You can even unpublish the VOD if you don't want anybody else to see it. Now within the video producer, my favorite part is going into the highlighter. Now the reason I like the highlighter is because it shows you basically everything that happens within the stream and then you can set segments and actually clip those segments into specific videos. So like I set a marker right here because this is where I had just won a game within my stream. This is post game. So now I know when I go back to find this VOD, I can actually take that segment, clip it, download it and start editing it for a YouTube video. This seriously is one of the most powerful tools and it does so much of the work for you before you even put it in your video editor. That way you have just the footage you need rather than trying to sift through what looks like four hours of streaming. Okay, so there are some cool plugins that you can also get for Twitch, for chat and other features. So one of them is called Better TTV or BTTV, you may have heard this in passing. So basically what this does is once you've linked it with your Twitch account, it allows you to add extra emotes 
to your channel for free. So basically all you have to do when you're in here is go to the emotes tab and select any of the ones that you want to add to your channel. So then when you go back into your channel and you type in cat jam, it will actually show up in your stream. So these are all of the emotes that are linked on my channel right now. So if I go over to my chat, you can see that they're actually already working here in chat. Now, I don't know why this one didn't work when I typed it. I think the plugin hadn't connected right away, but you can see it is working here. And if I type it again, it is working. On top of additional emotes that you get from BTTV, you also get certain chat command abilities. So if you come in here and go into your settings, you actually get significantly more control of everything you can do in your chat. So BTTV is a fantastic plugin for moderation tools as well as emotes. Now by default, you only get 15 emotes and if you do pay for their service, you can get more emotes, but that's also where Frankers comes in. You can also add more emotes over here that you couldn't add in BTTV. That's a really nice way to just make sure you add more so you have plenty for everyone to use. And on top of that, Frankers also offers other plugins like a compressor on stream. So say for example, the stream is too loud or too quiet in certain parts, you can actually turn this compressor on and now what it does is it makes all of the volume just completely squashed and one flat volume across. It's really, really convenient if the streamer doesn't have their audio all figured out yet. And this is a little bonus that I wanted to throw on. Now, if you remember me talking about Twitch Turbo earlier and getting site-wide ad-free experience, um, there is another way you can do it. If you are using Chrome, there is a plugin called Video Ad Block for Twitch. You can throw this in there, just be aware that it is a little weird when you use it solely because when you click on a stream that you're not subscribed to, like for example, I'm not subscribed to Imperial Hal, sometimes you won't get the uh, UI user right here. And other times you actually won't even get uh, like control of the settings right away. And it'll say that we're blocking an ad up here. Apparently I didn't get a pre-roll ad here. So we're gonna try Summit. I just wanna show you what it looks like when it's actually doing that. There we go. See how it says it's blocking ads right here. So that means, and you see how it's all grainy now. What's basically happening is you're actually getting the stream while the ad is still running. So it basically just intercepts the video signal and gives you the stream. So it still thinks it's playing the ad, but I actually, even though I'm set to 1080p, I don't get the 1080p source until this little blocking ads thing goes away. Now, the only downside of this is that obviously it doesn't work on mobile. So you are still susceptible to ads on mobile. But it is a nice way that if you're watching things on desktop that you can just get rid of all the ads because personally, I can't stand ads. And if you've noticed a lot of the top streamers who are signing contracts with Twitch, like Nick Merckx, for example, I get one to 10 ads an hour watching him when I'm on mobile or I'm not watching on my computer with the ad blocker built in. So this is a nice feature to have. Now I know that wasn't every single setting in Twitch, obviously there's a lot of things I could cover, but I feel like those are some of the most important things to talk about on Twitch and just some added bonuses that I figured I'd throw in there for you. A lot of this was just to really help a lot of the new beginners that are coming to Twitch. And I figured this is one of the best ways to get off the ground. Now, if you haven't watched my 20 OBS tips and tricks video, I'd suggest go checking that out just because there is so many things in there that you can do that you might not know about that I really tried to pack a lot of information in there. Not to mention it is my most popular video on the channel easily by far. So I think it will be very helpful if you are a new streamer. I wanna thank you all so much for watching again. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. I appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe if you want to help support the channel. Have fun streaming out there. Hopefully everything in here helped you today. And until the next video, I'll see you then. Peace.